Hello, welcome back to The Coding Circus. Today we are going to talk about variables in Python. And what are they? So a variable is used to store information so we can reference it later on. It's a container that holds the name of a spot in memory where the information lives. So let's take a look at some examples of variables and some of the things that we can do with them. You'll notice I have <coughs> the program that we had worked on before up on the screen, but today we're gonna focus in on the shell panel down here at the bottom, the interactive panel. And I'm gonna type in a variable called result. Now you'll notice when I press enter, I get an error. And the error says file string line two in module name error result is not defined. You see in Python, I need to define my variables and tell Python what I expect it to be. And there's two ways to do that in Python. You can do that explicitly by telling Python the type that you expect it to be, or you could assign it a value and Python will decide for itself what kind of information it should be storing. So if I say result equals three times five, has no problem with that. And then I can say result and press enter and it gives me the answer, which is 15. So Python was able to store that value and assign that to result and then print out that 15 result on the screen when I asked it to print out. Now, <coughs> there are some important things to be said about naming variables in Python. In Python, what we typically use is what's called snake case. That means if you have more than one word in your variable, you put an underscore between those words, like um, my name equals five. It is all lowercase and has the underscore between the word my and the word name. Now there's something that we'll learn later on called a class file. And when you name a class, you use something called camel case, which you might've seen in other languages. So if I write something in camel case, it would be a lower case. And it's gonna give me an error this time because I'm not gonna name, declare it, my class file. So my class file, that is done in what's called camel case because it kind of sort of looks like a camel. You start with a lowercase letter and then every word is a capital letter after that with no spaces or underscores. You don't have to do that in Python. You could actually do uh, variable names, lowercase, uppercase, with underscores, without underscores, as much as you want because Python doesn't care. It's a naming convention that we follow so we are all doing the same kind of thing in the programming language. So someday when you're programming at Google, you are programming in a way that everybody else expects you to be programming. An expression, which you might have heard this word before, is a valid mathematical or string calculation. So for example, three, times three is an expression. Now remember that variable result? Result plus four is an expression. Yes, Python remembers the variable result still for me. And in fact, even just something as simply as putting the number two is also an expression. One side note, I think we talked about this before, but if I put in the pound sign, Anything that is after the pound sign is what's called a comment. 
and Python pretty much ignores it. That'll become useful later on when we're writing some more complicated code. Okay, let's talk about variable types. <coughs> there are different size boxes for different kinds of information. So for example, if I say my string, lost my cursor, equals hello, my string is of what we call a string type. And we can verify that by running a command called type. and putting as the argument my string. And Java tells us that my string is of class type string. That means Java expects strings to be stored inside of that variable. A string is really a collection of characters inside of quotes. We can also check if result, that variable that we created earlier. And we can see that is of class type int, which is an integer. Let's talk about things that you can't do with variable names. Um, variables must start with a letter or an underscore character. That means you can't start with a number. That's not okay. Uh, they are allowed to have lowercase and uppercase letters, numbers 0 through 9, and underscores, and no other character. You can't put question marks or ampersands or any other kind of symbol inside of that variable name. So an example of a valid variable name would be um, name underscore one equals Tom. Name one would be a valid variable name and we can see that it's going to be a string type. Uh, underscore database connection equals, I'm just going to put a number in here. That's a valid variable name because it starts with an underscore. But if I do something like 34 happy equals 23, I get an error. Invalid syntax because you cannot start a variable name with a number. So that's invalid. You can't have a minus sign. My minus number equals 17. That's not okay. You're not allowed to have the minus nine, the minus symbol inside of a variable name. You cannot do spaces. My number equals five. Again, going to be a problem. You cannot have a space in a variable name. So no spaces, no other symbols other than the underscore and you cannot start with a number. That is all of what we're going to talk about for today. I'll see you next time.